Hey guys, I hope you're all doing well. Today, we're going to be talking about seven life lessons I've learned trading for over four years. Now, this is going to be really, really helpful, hopefully, to those of you who are, you know, either been trading for a while and you just, you know, can't seem to get things to work. Um, it's not going to be talking about the technicals, but nevertheless, I think that this is a really, really important video because a lot of these things are things that I never thought that I would actually learn from trading. And these things are not only helpful in life as per the title, life lessons, but they are also important in terms of trading and how I have progressed and how I've managed to, um, you know, just improve at trading over the years. Okay. And so I really, really do hope that you enjoy. I also hope you enjoyed the, um, the free accelerator course on the channel. Um, there's been some pretty good feedback from it so far. So I appreciate that. I'm glad that you will, um, hopefully most of you found it valuable and, uh, yeah, let's just get on with the video. Um, so got one of my favorite little blue boxes up here and we're just going to slowly bring it down. And so the first thing, if we ever get there, there we go. Time in does not equal results. This is something that I wish I had really, really understood earlier on. Because when I first started, what I would do is I would literally learn stuff online. And after I'd learned it, I would just go and I'd just start squiggling lines on charts. I'd start researching. I'd be on articles. I'd be researching endless blog con pieces of blog content. I'd be watching videos. I'd be doing everything I possibly could. I'd be digesting information every available hour of the day. And whilst there is definitely a time and a place for that in the beginning, what people often do is they get trapped in this cycle. And this is something I've spoken about loads of times on the channel. So I'm not going to, you know, go into it in too much depth here. Um, but people tend to get into this cycle where when they first learn, they are going through their digesting videos on the internet and all of these types of things. And, you know, they'll go and they'll practice and then they'll always kind of circle back to just digesting more content. And even after, you know, six months, a year, they're just still constantly digesting content, digesting content. They're getting no practice and they are just in that loop and they think that they are improving just because they're putting in the time they think just because they're drawing things on a chart or they're doing this or they're doing that or watching content that they're making progress and unfortunately just because you are putting the time in really does not equal results when it comes to trading because ultimately if you are spending loads of time doing all the wrong things then you're not going to get any results and that is the unfortunate reality you know i do speak to traders who have been trading for 10 years on and off some you know obviously not full time but people who have been trading for 10 years and they're like sam i just really still nothing seems to click it almost feels like i've made no progress over 10 years and as sad as that is to see, there is a reason for that. It's just a lack of having a good process. It's a lack of focus. There are so many different things that come into it. And it is not the person's fault a lot of the time because no one really talks about this stuff. Everyone's just like, oh, like the strategy, like great, you know, here's a strategy and bounce off this or whatever. And that's just only a piece of the puzzle, okay? And so the next thing, and by the way, this is also true in life, okay? As I said, with life lessons, like this is true for anything. You've got to know what the right places are to allocate your time. And so that's why when I approach a problem now in, in real life, I will always spend time looking at the actual problem itself first and being like, okay, what is the smartest use of my time? What are the one, maybe two things that will deliver 90 to 95% of the results in this thing? And then I will spend 90 to 95% of my time on those things okay now next thing focus is the master of everything i was when i first started i was the most compulsive person you have ever met okay um not necessarily if you kind of met me you know if i was at a bar or you just met me in real life but i really began to notice how scattered my thoughts were you know when i would try and sit down and i would you know even if it was something like you know watching a video and then finding a strategy and then i went to either forward test it or back test it so i'll be on the charts drawing up i'd notice how quickly it was before i just suddenly lost focus so let's say i got into a trade here testing testing got into a trade here and then after this i saw a particular something change in the charts i saw a time when it didn't work and i'd start looking at candles around this 
this point. I'll start looking at data. I'll be like, oh, this is a cool idea. Why don't I begin testing this out or doing this new thing on the chart? And I would go around in these circles. I'd find something new and then I'd switch. I'd go over, I'd go back to videos. I'd go back and repeat the cycle. And so similarly to the first time, it is about not understanding where the right places to put your time are. Uh, time on is and instead just you know going and just going through and scattering your focus over all different areas and ultimately it is a form of lack of discipline and that is not you know it's not me throwing shade on you being like we oh, are you know you haven't got any discipline I had very little discipline and if I just realized that um, focus combined with focus on the right things was just the only real area that I should have been focusing on. I would have been able to do so much better. And what that actually looks like is in this example, you would just follow this out until completion, until you've tested something properly. Okay. So whether that's 50, 100, 200, you know, iterations or following the same set of rules, I would go through and actually begin to stick out an idea to the end. It's so common for people to test out an idea once, twice, twice, three times, maybe even five times. And they're like, oh, this doesn't work. Let me just try this other thing. And they'll just keep going around testing endless ideas and endless things. And you just do not need it. Okay. So that is the second thing. And they are kind of a pair, these first two, um, because they are kind of interlinked to one another. Okay. So this next one is so, so important. I mean, all of these are important. So I'm not going to say that at the beginning of every single one. Um, but don't add complexity. Arguably, even once the simple is mastered. So let's go up here in fact let's get rid of some of these drawings here so that we can actually make some progress so at the core of most things we have got like the core 99 percent which again equals about which makes up uh, most of the results okay now most often this can be boiled down to something incredibly simple however when people have this or they have a version of this or a very vague version to begin with what they will begin doing is they'll begin stacking on, excuse me for these diagrams, I know sometimes they don't really make that much sense, but just bear with me. Um, they will begin stacking on layers on top of this simplicity, whether that's in the form of content or if it's in the form of a, you know, a strategy or a new concept they're adding, or maybe it's a new uh, method or a new way of looking at things, a new indicator, a new pattern, a new, you know, a new mentor, a new this, a new that, a new you know, I'm trying to think of other things, a new algorithm, a new, you know, they'll start stacking on endless amounts of things. And they will essentially make this what was originally very simple, very, very complex. And unfortunately, it is a byproduct of our society at the moment to take something simple and to just add so much complexity to something. When in fact, the best results often come from doing the simple well. You know, if you think about the famous athletes of the world who are literally going out and performing in, you know, let's say basketball, for example, um, excuse the incredibly odd shaped drawings as always. Um, <clears throat> but what they have to do is actually fairly simple. It's they need to practice, they need to practice smart, but they need to just do it day in, day out, day in, day out. They just need to do all of the work. And you'd be surprised how much, how many results come from just doing the work over and over and over again you know it's not rocket science to lose weight it is not rocket science to get in really really good shape because um the the challenge is not finding the next tactic it's not finding the next thing that you need to be able to do the real challenge is consistently doing something so if you ever tried to lose weight or get in good shape you know that's eating less or eating more if you're trying to put on weight um, then you will realize that the challenge is not finding that perfect method. The challenge is just eating the right things consistently all day because your mind will throw you off. You will be thrown off in all sorts of directions. That is the challenge because your mind will go everywhere and your job is to keep it focused. Again, linking back to that previous point about the importance of being focused. Okay, and so this is the same in trading. It's the same in anything. There is an obsession with the tactic. Everybody is just has just become obsessed with the idea of finding this light bulb moment where everything begins to click. And that, don't get me wrong, these moments come 
And they are very, very helpful when they do come, but they're useless on their own in the same way that ideas are useless without implementation. OK, but everybody's become obsessed with the tactic because they think that's going to solve the problem of their scattered mind, of the scattered focus and trying to, you know, do basically just they're trying to avoid the pain of doing the work. And it is painful. It can be a little bit tricky. OK. So the next one, ooh, the next one is don't get lost in the definitions, get lost in practice. So what I mean by this, so trading is a great example of this, because when I was first learning, I remember I would go in phases of commenting on people's videos, things like that's not the true definition of a, I don't know, uh, of a break and retest level. or that's not what x really is uh, or this isn't how i learned it what is right these questions are a complete waste of time okay because you are never going to find a place where you learn the same piece of information from two different people. There will always be slight differences. Now, there may be minor differences. They may be absolutely huge differences. But the point is, is if you're getting lost in the definitions and you're focusing your time on, oh, is this the proper definition? It's completely pointless because what's only relevant to you is, OK, what, how am I defining it and how am I testing those sets of rules? The names that we give to things are completely pointless. You know, I see people repackaging these same things over and over and over again, the same simple concepts, adding new names, the, you know, the Mission X system, the, you know, the this, the that. It's just a waste of time because the only thing that matters is what are my rules? Have I tested those rules? And how are those rules performing in real time? That is it. Whether you call it a break and retest level, you could have 10 people all trading quote unquote break and retest levels and they all do it in a slightly different way. And so by you commenting on someone's video going, oh, no, no, like oh, this isn't, you know, this isn't how I define that. That's not good. And I used to do this as well. Not to a crazy extent. I'd mainly do it in groups and stuff like that. I'd be like, oh, no, what do you mean? You know, this isn't how I do it. But the important thing here, and I guess the crux of what I'm trying to say is you need to get lost in actually the practice of whatever it is you're doing, whether that's trading or whatever it is, you need to understand what you're doing and have a method to go out there and test and actually put into practice. Now, that doesn't mean risk anything. When you're testing anything, risking money is just a stupid, stupid plan. Okay, you need to understand what you're doing beforehand and then slowly build up. That's what I did. Um, but yeah, it's just really, really important, guys. So just keep that in mind. Okay. Next one is success is meaningless without fulfillment. You can't take it to the grave. It's another addiction for most. So this was particularly relevant for me um, because I always I began getting obsessed with with money. I began to use my lack and my feeling of lack as motivation for improving and putting in the work. So if this was me back in the day, this was my little frame and then it's supposed to be a thought in my thought i was thinking about money okay i was thinking about money not because money has any inherent value it wasn't even the things that i could buy for me it was about the respect it was about if i'm truly honest with myself it was about the the validation and you know really i just felt like i didn't have enough and i ultimately felt like i had lack now every single time that i felt that lack what I would do is I would begin to shift it at first consciously and then subconsciously into motivation. So I would translate that lack into motivation. And when you are constantly using something for motivation, because you will need some sort of motivation to get up and do something every single day, what happens over time is because you're using that feeling of lack, or in my case, what I was using is that, that feeling of lack of, oh, I don't have enough. I need to work harder. I need to do more. I need to do this. I need to be smarter. And then what happened is because I was doing that, I was just reinforcing that lack. Every single time I'd motivate myself because it would come from that place of lack. And the more I did it, the more intense it would get. I would literally be basically snowballing and compounding that feeling of lack. And I can tell you right now that what happened after even six months to a year is I began feeling uh, like less 
than I'd ever felt. Meaning I just felt like a complete piece of shit from being honest. I just, everything about it, I just felt like I didn't have enough in any area of life. I felt depressed, I felt anxious. And it was because I'd spent all my time reinforcing that lack. And I'm telling you, it is not fun to, you know, you could have everything you want in the world, but if you feel inside like you've got nothing, you are just going to be a greedy, horrible, it's just going to be a horrible existence for you. And it took me a long time to really realize this lesson. And I understand it's very difficult to do if you're in a situation where you haven't got much money at all. Um, but to be honest with you, it, it is something that I wish that I'd done sooner. And, you know, if I had the choice between trading um, successfully and, you know, but having this kind of really big feeling of lack and not trading successfully and feeling completely fulfilled, I would choose not trading and feeling completely fulfilled every single time. Because I can tell you this road is not a fun road to be on. It's very very depressing and life there's so much more to life because you're not going to be able to take your success and your money to the grave with you the only thing that you're going to be left with was what was in your heart and so it's crucially important to me to keep that stuff in check now and to more importantly just don't do something that you don't enjoy and i'll be reflecting on this in just a minute in one of the future points oh and next thing is oh well the same point the follow on to this is it's just another addiction for most most people are using the idea of success, the idea that they've seen on YouTube or they've seen on the internet of what success is and what that life would look like. And they're glamorizing it in their head. They're thinking that it is something that it is not. And they are using that as a form of escape. They're working towards that thinking, oh, it's, you know, this is going to be an escape or I'm going to be happy when. And they're reaffirming that idea that they're not happy right now. They are just trying to go into the future and grab that thing that they really want. And they are, it's just, it's completely um, flawed, that thinking, um, but it is very seductive and it's very easy to get lost in it. And I was lost in it for a very, very long time. Um, and I found that the best solution for this for me was first of all, becoming aware of it. I found that journaling helped quite a lot, but also getting out of my own head, going and integrating with the community, doing other things that, um, brought me back into the real world and realized how much I actually had to give and giving back was a huge huge part of that not just with trading and all that other stuff like there's so much more to life than trading believe me and so just helping other people and doing other things that are nice was a massive massive thing for me okay next thing pick your circle wisely now I see this all the time now I'm going to make a more in-depth video about this but what I'm talking about with your circle if you don't know is your friendship circle and one of the things I don't like online when I hear people talking about their circle and, you know, people will, you know, be really motivational about it and be like, you know, you know, uh, show me your friends or show you show you your future and all of this type of stuff. Um, but I they, what they'll do is they'll try and make it seem like your circle should all be people who are on the exact same path as you. You know, so let's say, you know, you're kind of entrepreneurial slash tradery and you really have this goal and all these goals and these big aspirations and you just are going for your goals. Now, what you might think or what people will make you think is that you need loads of people who are doing the exact same things as you. And I used to think this for a long time and I used to, you know, think, oh, I need to find people who are just like me on doing the same thing. And now I completely disagree with that because diversity really is the spice of life. And what I really think it comes down to when I think of picking your circle wisely is people who, number one, are open-minded, okay? Number two, uh, they care and support you no matter what they don't shoot you down in other words when you express ideas and all this other sort of stuff um and they they aren't using you okay so they aren't using you isn't just or oh, using you for money or this or that you know you'll often find people who just really really enjoy going out you know in my case um you know i have a lot of friends who love going out and getting you know, really smashed and drinking and kind of that nightlife, that party scene. Um, and they always have. And, you know, a, a lot of them I've just completely let go of. Um, not because that was what they, they're doing and not because they're bad people and I'm great. Like, it's nothing to do with that. It's just I don't particularly want that in my life. And I found that a lot of them, definitely not all of them, um, 
I'm not a saint. I always, you know, I still out go out and drink occasionally. Um, but I found that a lot of the times people just want something to do and you were just a vehicle to do that with them. And so it's not that they actually want to spend time with you. They just enjoy the thrill of going out and getting drunk. And there's, there is a place for those friends as well. But for me, I would like to keep those on the back, those types of friends on the back burner um, and seeing them kind of a lot, a lot less often. It doesn't mean isolating them and cutting them off completely. Um, but I want to have people around me who support me, who care about me um, and who we can have a genuine relationship with. I don't care if someone's not entrepreneurial or they don't want to do this. I, who cares? There is so much more to life than any of this. And so what is important to me is I just have friends who I can bounce ideas off with, who I can have fun with, um, who, you know, less stress, low maintenance. Those are the type of people I want in my life. OK, I don't care about them being on the same path as me. Don't get me wrong. It is nice to have people who are on that same path and who you can talk with. And that is why I think it's so valuable to do it, join communities, people who are interested in stuff that you are interested in. Now, I'm also going to pair this with the idea of have an interest, or have interest outside of trading. For so long, I was so obsessed and laser focused on trading, I just forgot about everything else. And that actually kind of sucks. OK, it really just I really just wish that I hadn't done that. Well, I don't wish I hadn't done it, but I just if I could go back, I would I would definitely change it. And then number seven is reflect on your mortality. When you truly realize that your time here is limited, you will change what you do each day. The amount of days, guys, that I have spent doing things that I don't like. I actively know that I don't like doing them whilst I'm doing them, and yet I still do them. If I could take that time back and realize that each one of those days that I was doing that, tomorrow was never guaranteed. I could have a heart attack tomorrow. I could, something could happen tomorrow. I could completely, you know, just evaporate or spontaneously combust or something. Now, when you really realize that, why on earth would you spend your life doing something that you don't enjoy? Now, as time has gone on in the past, in history, um, it's been a lot harder to make this a reality. It's been a lot harder to sit there and think, OK, I'm going to go after something that I like. But this is one of the perks of the modern world that we live in. Technology in particular has opened up so many paths and opportunities for us to do things that we would be much more happy with. And this opportunity is something that for a lot of people has kind of gone and been swept under the rug and being able to do something that excites you with your life is such a blessing and we are all in such a blessed position just to even be able to consider this and you know when you really realize that it's limited just the things that you do with your day will become what you enjoy now there is another thing that's kind of a follow-on to this as well is when you're doing things that you enjoy have things that you do without an end result in mind. In fact, I'm going to add this one on as a separate um, as a separate thing here. So eight. Because everybody and a lot of people who watch this channel are probably going to be very goal oriented. They're going to be people who are, OK, I'm really trying to chase this goal. I'm trying to get good at trading. I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to do that. And that's all great. And I'm a big advocate of all of that stuff. But what I started doing after a while is I started turning everything in my life into a goal, into something in the future that I could get. And that doesn't necessarily mean money or mean something that I could obtain, but it means some feeling or something in the future that I could grab onto. I'm just going to depict the future with an F here. And so one of the issues with that is it takes all of the fun out of life, because if you're constantly doing something only for the end result, then you are, by definition, just slugging through that process. And one of the biggest things that I found helped me so much was just actually separating it out and just focusing on something that I enjoyed without any kind of end result or expecting anything in return, okay? And so that's pretty much it, guys. So I really, really hope that you have enjoyed this video. If you have, I appreciate you leaving a like. And if you've got any lessons that you've learned so far, then drop them in the comments below and I'd love to hear those. Um, but yeah, guys, take it easy and I'll see you in the next one.